So I've got this zero zooming in low, low, low over the um, low over the environment. This is my drawing. Oh, wobbly cam. Buildings, the rubble, the harbour in the background. There we go. So my first priority was to build up that foreground because that's going to be painted dark. So what I've got here is the first model. It's not well lit. There's the um, plan view of the uh, zero. That's what I did the model with. Should put that up there. Of course, it's a bit bigger now, but um, I think it'll be better to be photographed and reduced in size. Gave me a bit more working space. See that? It's based on the plan. Now here's our model of Darwin. One of the military facilities made of paper. Right. Now if I put that on the edge there, we can get it, we can have a walk around this. Just like we were people at the scene. So we've got the sheds, oil drums, um, Pieces of cast off corrugated iron. Well, here's a zero. I could use this zero for the background. It's about the size of the one that's showing up in the shot, too. It's not, it isn't the one that's in the shot, but it's going to look something like that booming through the back of the town. Low, because they could see the pilot in the cockpit. Okay, so. It's got a flipping gum tree in it. Gotta have a flipping gum tree, mate. We've got our flipping gum tree. Give me a home among the gum trees. Lots of plum trees. Sheep or two and a kangaroo. So, there's the foreground like on the drawing. Remember on the drawing up there, you can see that foreground, that group of sheds. Lots of buckled corrugated iron. It's almost like, um, I guess the power of exploding bombs is like a um, a hurricane or a monster, a hurricane just hitting a place and blowing everything to pieces. Now what I've also created here, let's just pan out a bit there. There's a car here in the foreground. I wanted to show the American military presence because really, in those days there in, in Darwin, America provided the material to protect that town, even though it didn't for those raids on February the 19th. Um, later they'll provide to provide planes, material and personnel. Here's the car that's going in there. What you'll notice is, well, the spring's made of plastic, see the leaf spring there? I love that about old cars, they're so simple, they're like carts. The wheels carved out coarsely out of balsa wood. The cabin's been hollowed out only to a short depth. I've put in the acetate for the windows and then I've put the strut in over the top, that side strut. But it's a marvellous little thing, it really looks the part. Okay, there you go. The rear view, that's probably what we're going to see. The back window's still taped off, so in a minute when I paint it, well, um, that's going to be in that crushed shed there. Can't do it. It won't sit there. But it will eventually, I'm sure. Okay, anyway, it's going to sit somewhere there. But you get the picture. Uh-huh, picture. There you go. So, car. Person's eye view is about there. Where it goes, little exhaust pipe. Probably overdid it there. But I love the look of that. And now what we need is, we need a bloke, don't we? Because this is all about people. The planes, this story, history is about people. And this has been my concern with each of these models, to make the human present obvious. The human presence obvious. And there he is. That little digger on the run. From a fighter plane. The scales aren't absolutely correct. The building's too small, figure's a bit bigger. But what I want to do is I want that sense of him right up in the foreground. I want him to be prominent. 
and in fact he'll probably get cut off a bit in the shot but he's working fine if we look right up close at him you might notice a few things he's been made out of wire and silicon kit that's why you see that thing still sticking out oh, I can't get it to focus on his hat's a piece of tissue but what you will notice is the wire of the armature is sticking through in all sorts of places. The armature is the frame that goes underneath. That's a, that bit of wire, it looks like he's kicking this great big wire. That's the wire that I made his frame up with. And if you look at the neck area, you can actually see the curve of the loop of wire here that goes around, forms his ribs and goes up into the back of his head. I'm sure I had some tin snips that I could cut him off, but he's a wonderful little figure to be running around the place. Even on camera here, he's starting to get this sense of him being... Fair dinkum, mate. He's fair dinkum. He's got his strides on. He's got his long shorts on. So he's ready to go. Fella in his gum tree. What more could you want? And I have another guy in the background and he'll just be looking up or firing a rifle because there was accounts of people um, using the most ludicrous hand weapons against these brutal planes. Car. Okay, so that's the harbour going together. Uh, gee, that photograph's well. Using lovely things like watercolour paper and just watercolour paper, scoring it and bending it. You can see the detail on the buildings. If you just come down here, what you notice is the feeling of corrugated iron. You don't actually want it bent up and down. You just need a sense of the light hitting it. See that? Around those two windows. You get a sense of the light just sort of coming off the undulations. Cracked up shed, that'll look good with little flecks of rust, but as you see in the rough, all that will be painted in deep shadow and the white and the lighter highlights will just be brushed out of it. See that? It'll be fuzzy shadows. Okay. Lovely shot of the zero. That should go down well. Okay overhead shot that was like a spotter's chart they made hundreds and hundreds of models during the war to show people the silhouettes of these planes because flying over they wouldn't have a clue whether they were friend or foe that's why the markings became more and more dramatic towards the end of the war so that people would not shoot down their own planes because tragically it was far too often the case but I think in the heat of the moment where planes are coming in at less than 100 feet very fast, it must be difficult to know.
What's good about this is, look, um, what I've done is I've taped off the window before I painted the car. See, I've, I've made the back window in there. And now what I'm doing is I'm pulling the tape off. And you can see how that's made an interior to the car. I've got a paint in the window stripe. Where is he? See that? I've got to get the filler off. I put in a whole back panel. Can you see that? Now I just have to restore that a bit. But that's a lovely view of the back of the car, isn't it? Very good. There's that little car. Finished off the false wood pieces. The back window that we've just masked off. actually been covered while we're painting the whole car. Rear mud guards and tail lights, the moulded bumper. The dirt on the wheel arches. Put the hub cap in. So there we go.
Here's the little guy shooting at the zero. But if you see it, you'll see him from the back, not from the front, because have a look from the front. Can you see it just doesn't work? But from the back, it's quite, it's quite different. So what I've done is I've put that silicon kit on, as you can see, and I've carved it with a knife as I was working at it. And that's the angle that you'll be seeing him from. From there. There's a flat section there, there's a flat spot. I have to fill that in. See that square patch under his arm there? Don't know how that happened. That needs to be filled in. He's got a helmet on. It's just a circle of acetate. If you see underneath, you'll probably notice the shine from the acetate. But he's looking good. Then we've got the, um, the new building that I've put in because it didn't work very well. And the trees. Um, the old building was too small. It was the wrong shape. Everything was wrong with it. I've changed the foreground a bit and if you look at the trees they're quite interesting aren't they they've got a leafy sort of texture I'll show you how they were made in a second because I'm going to make one holes in the roof I did a lot of research with Darwin material found the website for the town that's a really good angle good lighting but let's get around the back of the trees what I've used is I've used silicon kit onto acetate because I needed the feeling that you could look around look through the trees because occasionally that's the character of see that isn't that amazing it really does look like a tree against the light so you get this lovely sort of same here see that those trees are looking good aren't they so that's that's the effect I'm going to have. It's going to be dark. Good stuff. But there's the new building. You'll see parts of the frame inside it. The tree's looking good now. The tree's virtually complete. Got some old oil drums around. Put some strapping on the side walls. Some holes in the roof. This is what's happened in the bomb damage that I've found in the photos. Lots and lots of holes in the roof. There's, well, there's a picture of one of those bombed houses that I'm using as reference. You really get that feeling of that sort of... Look at those buildings, they're so dilapidated. Lots of framing. I'm using those as inspiration for my illustration. Trees in the background, what I'll try and do is, I'll try and work out how high the section should be. So I'll take the model. And I'll work out where I want to put the trees. I want the trees up here in the background. So I take a piece of acetate. This is the acetate. I put it where I want it in the background. And I'll draw in the shape of the trees. I'm using my reference of the buildings and pictures of Darwin. And what I do is... Draw out the shape of the trees. A few high points, a few low points. Okay, put this down. I've got the shapes I need there. Marked out onto the thing. Maybe I can put it on a white piece of paper just to show you. That'll probably flare. I can see the red lines here some tweezers. So what I do is I get the silicon and I actually dab the trees in okay like this. I'll just cut that off. So I put some good blobs of silicon on there. Now what I need to do is shape that to a tree type shape. Let's just zoom in there and see if we can get a better look at it. 
Okay, you can. That's good. Okay, well, just leave it there. I'll put it above the shadow and then I'll shape it. I'm using a variety of different things. Usually I'm just using it's important that I recycle, I think. So what I'm using is I'm using pieces of balsa. So I'll get the balsa. Put that down. goes behind there see and that'll be that'll be secured later what I'll do is I'll work that out in a second but that's just about ready to go so I've got the pilots I've got the guys the guy with the gun will be here so the little guy will be here or there I don't know something like that he'll be in amongst it there get rid of this stuff I'll give you a bit of a background and the harbour will be in the background, so he'll be there, so you'll be able to see him having a bit of a shot at our zero as it passes. Okay, well let's just have a look there, we'll just try and get that in. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove that stuff in and position it where it's correct. So I'll start by moving that back around and I'll build a frame. Okay, we have the... Um, We'll just turn this head around. I'm going to um, put some stuff on the back. One of the things that didn't work out was the um, banana tree. I was going to use that. It was made out of old pieces of plastic bag. The, the leaves are made of plastic bags. And the trunk was made of um, silicon kit. But it's too big. Like when I put it up here, I find it's just too big. The scale's not correct. So if I put it up here, it doesn't, just doesn't seem right. Oh, I might stick it right up in the um, foreground. I don't know, anyway, the guy's going to be running towards us. Well, let's turn this around now. You saw me making the tree there, so um, if I can just wedge this up. Get the plank under there. Now, what I want to do is I want this back here. This is the tree that's going in the back. I want it about that high. Well, you can see what I need to do, really. It needs to be flat like that. A bit higher. So what I'll do is, it's got to be flat, and I can mark that with anything because it doesn't matter much. This mark is great because it marks, the only trouble is you see it really clearly. But then we'll start, then I'll start painting it actually. Oops. Now I'll score that. Well, let's try it. What I'll do is I'll try it with super glue again.
Now, I'm just trying to decide whether to use the um, banana tree or not. What I'll do is I'll get the wire cutters and cut it off and have a look. I've modelled it on a picture of a banana tree I found um, after the uh, raid in Darwin. I've put it down onto the base, see how I've glued it to the base so that I could model it. And basically I've used pieces of plastic, not with the um, wire, I've just used this plastic from a plastic bag, a shopping bag. You can't see it, anyway. Plastic from a shopping bag. And um, that was cut into the leaf shapes. And then I put a sort of a, um, a top on it to make it look more like a leaf. What I did was I got the hot glue gun and I put some reinforcing along the top of the bag. I didn't think it would work basically, but look. So it's got a ridge on it, and then I cut the leaf shapes out. Works well, I was very surprised. Um, so what I do is, once I've got this shape, I cut the leaves out into the leaf shape. So I cut the leaves out. And that was stuck on each. So once I'd cut the leaves and shaped them, they were stuck onto the banana tree by just gluing it. I've tried to combine the things I saw around government buildings. And the things I saw were banana trees, gums. So that's in there. Let's have a look. How it looks. Looks fine. Okay, so the next thing is the running guy goes in there. He goes in near the palm tree, near the banana tree. That's about right. Ah, oh, that's good. So he'll be about there, yeah, near the banana tree. Now the next thing to get right is um, what I have is I have the um, backdrop. So what I need to do is I need the zero in there behind. So what I've done is I've started carving the plane and that's him here. And what I'll be doing is I'll be chopping away. Now I'll put the plan back up here. I've got the plan here. And you can see the plane flying through the street there. And that's what I'll be carving now. So I've got this. I've made it a bit bigger because it suited the plan better. So carving away at that. So obviously I have to carve the nose off.
Okay, here we go, let's paint the thing. If you can see the palette over here, um, what I'll do is I'll be mixing up some brown, blue and black. There's the brown, blue and black, and I'm going to coat that whole whole surface in these colours. So it's going to be very dark, and I was very scared to do it, but let's give it a try anyway. Because I spent a long time building that, and now I have to paint it all black pretty well. So here we go, black, pretty well. I'll get some brown, mix some brown through there. Jim, come and have a look. I'm talking to the camera. Yeah, I'm talking to the camera. Oh, it's okay, I can edit. Can you see that? Do you want to paint some? No, thanks. Oh, you can do it, here. Yeah. No, no, I don't, I don't. Do Paint a bit of the side of the house. Oh, it's got to be on camera. Come around here. Yeah? Yeah? It's all right, I can put that stuff back on. Bit of the roof. Can you do the roof? Nice straight strokes. I'll show you with a flat brush. See the flat brush? See how it's a flat brush? Mm -hmm. What you do is with the flat brush, this is important. Go like this, and then you go in the direction of the. See how the brush is flat to the surface? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jim, for your little bit of help there. I've been dying to do this. I have been dying to do this, and I was so terrified. You still got to sometimes do things that you're not very um, confident about.
Got the new zero here. We've worked out the cockpit. Isn't it wonderful? But it only goes this far. Got the drop tank on. You can actually see that the wings are not the correct shape, of course. But it's just meant to look right from about there. Um, carved the cockpit. That was a bit of a challenge. Got the cockpit on. It's not strictly correct. The slope at the front of the windscreen is not too hot, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it's got potential, isn't it? It's really the part. And I've got the pilot. The pilot's carved out of a tiny piece of balsa wood. You can't see him at all, I don't suppose. But he's going to have goggles and everything, so... It's going to be the pilot. I'm just looking for some reference now for a Japanese pilot. But, um, of course, the real news was um, yesterday finishing the... Um, oh, no, not finishing. Getting the painting done of the uh, set. Now, it is backlit, so... That earth is lovely. Just right, banana tree. Car in there. It's pretty good guy shooting. Now what happens of course is now that this is painted the zero I've been building goes in along the back of the buildings. So, talk about unsteady cam. So he's going to be, that's what he's going to be firing at. I'm just winging over, I'm not sure, somewhere there. The pilot looking out of the um, side of it. Not that you'd see much coming past it. I don't know, closing speed, 600 kilometres per hour, whatever. But have a look, there's some lovely detail here. Nice detail in the buildings. It's a bit like Monty Python. Ah, the steel looks great. The buildings are so much better now that they're painted. So here's our final zero. The one that's going to be flying behind the buildings. See the pilot in the cockpit, um, the weathering techniques. I've just used some white paint here to make the cowlings look slightly weathered. And here's the size of my finger next to it, so it's that big, as big as the thumb. Drop tank underneath. That's um, as good as it gets. The canopy's not very clear for some reason. When I've, um, when I've glued it in, the canopy's gone hazy, but I'm just gonna go with it. I think it's a really impressive little piece. Let's take it off there and I'll show you the top of it. Funny stubby wings, unpainted. Pilot's face. I love this view here. This is just so neat. Because the wing's not, you know, it's like... But it does look the part. Lots of weathering. I've got some... Um, oil coming out of the cowlings here, oil stains, and the roundel at the back. I was reading pilot's reports and they were saying how faded the um, the Japanese insignia looked on the planes when they flew through Darwin, or flew over Darwin. So I've tried to fade those off a bit. So what I need to do is just secure the zero on the back of the um, set here. So I've got... Um, the wire, the wire will be, let's have a look, what I'll do is I'll secure the wire onto the back here and the plane will be seen from the front, so like that, just cut down that piece. I'm thinking, I need to cut off, it's just a coat hanger, I just need to cut off about that much, 
so I can get that down into the base. So there's the look. I've just got to paint that figure in the background now, but that's pretty well it. And you can see the bottom of the trees there in the background need some um, need some colour brushed into them. The front faces of the buildings might be just a bit too pale and shiny. These roofs, which look very light here, are actually much are much darker. It's just they're catching a lot of light. The car's really nice. It's my favourite things. So there you go. What you can see clearly in this shot is the different sizes of the characters. They're all... I've tried to make the set look much deeper by having the front character much larger than the back character and the um, soldier bigger than the pilot. But I love that idea of these two guys eyeballing each other in that mad moment of chaos when that plane is passing by the ground at probably 400 kilometres per hour, probably more. They, they would see barely nothing of each other and yet people could describe the faces of those pilots as they went over. I don't know how that works. That's an extraordinary thing because um, it's, we're talking split seconds here. Maybe it's because your senses are just so alert at that moment with something threatening your life. And the two reactions are clear. You know, one person's just sort of out of here and the other person's just picked up whatever's at hand and had a go. And I'm not sure it has to do with heroism. I'm, I'm curious about this. You know, it is heroic, don't get me wrong, but um, it's that moment. It's this guy blazing away at this plane absolutely uselessly because it's just almost an impossibility to even strike a moving aircraft with any kind of heavy weapon, let alone a rifle. But anyway, it's just a reaction. It's just that moment, how people react. I love that idea anyway. Now a bit of light on the rifle, some light off the hands, because he will see his hand. Okay, there we go, we've got Darwin. I've set him up on um, little pieces of foam core. He's set up like a set there. There's a little guy running. There's the paint in the background. What's so cool about this shot? Check this out. Because look, we've got the um, sketch in the background showing what was what the plan was. Love the way those round bells come out of that plane. And then we've got the um, set. Gosh, it's looking real. Now look at this. We dropped the um, watercolour in the back. Because I've got the backwards scene. Have a look at the change in the colour and intensity. So there's Darwin Harbour in the background, isn't that neat? One, two, oh, yeah. God, look at that, isn't that fantastic? I reckon the horizon's going to be about there. 